much. I was once the mayor of the city of uh, New York. I served for three terms from 1978 uh, through 1989. Okay. I uh, was uh, born in the Bronx, and I lived there for the first seven years of my life. Um, it was Cretona Park East. We were on the park side, and uh, at age uh, seven, because of the Depression, uh, it was 1931, my father had lost his job, and uh, a job was offered to him by uh, my mother's brother if we came to Newark in New Jersey. And so we moved to New Jersey, and I lived there for the next uh, 10 years of my life. And then in 1941, we relocated uh, to New York City in Brooklyn, Ocean Parkway. Um, and it was a nice life. We were poor, like all poor people in those days. We didn't know we were poor. Uh, and we got along, and uh, the areas that I lived in were like 100% Jewish, so I thought the whole world was Jewish. I have lived in uh, Manhattan, uh, the uh, Bronx, Brooklyn, and uh, the other two have yet uh, uh, to get me there, but sooner or later it's possible. Not actually until I did. Uh, I um, went uh, into the Army in uh, uh, 1943 uh, after um, attending CCNY for two years. And uh, when I came out of the uh, Army, I uh, was uh, 22 years uh, old. Uh, I was still living um, in uh, my uh, parental uh, home. Uh, and I ultimately went uh, to uh, law school, uh, NYU law, uh, School of Law. And I uh, became a lawyer in 1949. Uh, and in 1956, I moved uh, to Greenwich Village, where I still live, in a different place, but in the village, uh, and uh, to uh, find uh, friends and uh, get acclimated and so forth, uh, I joined the local political uh, club, uh, which was then supporting Adlai Stevenson, and I became their street speaker and supported uh, Adlai in 1956 and again in 1960 when he ran against uh, uh, Ike uh, Eisenhower and was defeated on both occasions. And that was my introduction into politics. I uh, became very active in the club, Village Independent Democrats, and uh, in 1962 when they were seeking uh, to run against uh, the so-called regular uh, member of the assembly, uh, Bill Passanante, who uh, belonged to Carmine DeSapio's club, uh, he being uh, the uh, county leader at the time, Carmine, and uh, they couldn't find anybody to run, and so I volunteered, and uh, I lost. And uh, I was lucky that I lost, otherwise I'd be in Albany today, and that would be a fate worse than death. So um, I ran again the following year, this time against uh, Carmine Sapio, who, as I said, uh, was the county leader, uh, had having been defeated in 1961 and running for uh, election again in 1963, it being a two-year uh, term or two-year election. Uh, and uh, it was difficult to find someone who would uh, oppose him I have volunteered again, uh, and I defeated him uh, in an election where about 9,000 people voted, and uh, I won by 41 votes. I don't know uh, if it was there uh, that I uh, decided uh, that even if I was going to die, and obviously I didn't, I'm not afraid of death. Uh, death is part of life. Most people I have met, uh, 
particularly Americans, uh, just are so afraid of death. Um, I don't look forward to it at 85. I know it's just a few years away, but I don't fear it. I believe in the afterlife. I believe uh, in uh, reward and punishment, and I hope I'll be rewarded. Um, I think some of all of that uh, comes from having served in the war. Um, and I think um, serving in a war and seeing people die um, also impacts on how you think about other wars. So I believe uh, that uh, this country has to be defended and that there are just wars and certainly World War Two was uh, such a just uh, war, uh, but that the Vietnam War was not. And I thought that uh, we shouldn't be in it. And I was marched in the various demonstrations uh, against it. Uh, I uh, uh, believed it was uh, wrong, and ultimately um, a huge majority of the people of uh, this country thought it was wrong. And uh, they stopped it with their marches. Well, I think like most uh, soldiers at the time, um, I served in the European Theater of Operations and uh, served uh, in two uh, campaigns, uh, one for northern France, the other for the Rhineland, and I fought uh, in uh, Holland, Belgium, Germany. Um, I saw people killed. I was uh, very frightened <laughs> and uh, often thought I would uh, probably die uh, in uh, Europe on the battlefield somewhere, but I didn't and uh, I came out alive. I uh, was discharged as a uh, sergeant. Uh, um, I think uh, that uh, being in a war has an effect on your character, uh, your outlook on life, and uh, I don't recommend it. There's certainly other ways to, <laughs> to build character. Um, but it's part of uh, who you are, what you are. I believe, um, Mr. President, uh, that if you don't exercise uh, your authority to get out of Afghanistan, uh, you will, uh, A, suffer an enormous defeat in the congressional elections uh, next year and uh, may very well uh, go down as a one-term uh, president. Uh, I uh, think you made a terrible mistake, and I have always believed uh, that when you conclude you've made a mistake, correct it if you possibly can, and in this case, you can. Uh, our allies are deserting us. Uh, you tout the fact that something like 40 or more um, countries are allied with us. We have and, uh, currently 68,000 uh, troops there that are American. I think uh, that uh, the um, total number of uh, NATO troops from a lot of European countries uh, don't total anything like uh, 68,000. Uh, and also uh, the papers are replete uh, with comments that uh, Canada uh, and uh, uh, the Dutch uh, intend to uh, bring their forces home. And that will be the case with a whole host of other countries. And even countries that are there uh, don't want to be engaged in uh, combat. They want American troops to do the combat. Uh, they would prefer uh, less dangerous work. That's the German uh, troops that are there would prefer less dangerous work. Uh, uh, so, and the French aren't uh, there at all, I don't think, and said that they're not coming. So we can't depend on the allies uh, of NATO uh, that swore a blood oath uh, uh, that it's one for all and all for one, like the Three Musketeers. And so uh, they want us to pull the chestnuts of the world uh, from out of the fire.
and we don't have uh, uh, the young men and women to sacrifice for that, and we don't have the treasure to spend on that. Uh, most people say Alexander the Great uh, couldn't win in, uh, in um, Afghanistan and left it, and we know the British certainly uh, left it, and the Russians, who were willing to use any kind of mechanism, uh, torture uh, at the very beginning, <laughs> uh, and work your way up, um, ultimately with over 100,000 uh, uh, troops, uh, ultimately had to concede defeat and walked out of Afghanistan. There's nothing there worth having. Uh, the current uh, war uh, in Afghanistan and uh, in Iraq, um, that in Afghanistan it's a war in support of a corrupt uh, leader uh, of his people uh, uh, who uh, uh, has his own family problems. His brother is allegedly very much involved in the drug trade. Why should we be spending uh, the blood uh, of young uh, Americans, men and women, uh, to uh, keep this uh, government uh, that is corrupt in power? Of course, if uh, they uh, become a threat to us, uh, should we leave? And I hope we uh, leave and do it as quickly as possible. I would be for starting it tomorrow. Um, then we bomb them. Then we send in special forces. But I don't believe uh, that we should be uh, involved in a land war. Um, and when uh, the president uh, had his speech at uh, West Point, he didn't convince me. And I don't think he convinced a lot of people, some of course he did, uh, that this was a war of necessity. Uh, I'm not saying that we shouldn't uh, uh, be involved and uh, protect ourselves, but I don't think it has to be uh, via a land war. Um, and more important uh, than Afghanistan, everybody says, and I agree, is Pakistan. And uh, uh, we don't have troops in Pakistan. We bomb them. And uh, maybe we should bomb them more in the areas where uh, the uh, Taliban and uh, Al-Qaeda are uh, situated. Well, I am for the passage of the legislation, no matter what shape it uh, comes out of uh, the ultimate debate in the Senate, uh, on the basis that uh, it isn't good enough currently. There are things that are uh, there that I don't agree with. Uh, um, but uh, let's get it passed and then amend it. I don't agree. Uh, with those who say that people who want to spend their money on what others call Cadillac insurance instead of buying a Cadillac uh, should be taxed for that. Why should we all be brought down to a common denominator of uh, less than what some of us think uh, we would like to insure ourselves for? I, for example, have just been uh, through a horrendous hospitalization involving uh, a uh, quadruple bypass and a replacement uh, of the aorta valve. And uh, I was in the intensive care unit for five weeks because on several occasions the doctors uh, didn't think I would make it because of problems that arose. Uh, and uh, the ultimate cost of my stay uh, and I'm not on Medicare because I'm a working person, and if you're on working uh, basis, you your first carrier is your private carrier. So I don't cost the government money at this point, to, I, so far as I know, um, under Medicare. And uh, uh, my estimated uh, cost uh, of uh, the doctors and the hospital service that I had, I'm told, is probably in excess of a million dollars. Now, if I want to have a million dollars as I have by way of insurance, 
Should I be taxed for that? Be simply because you want to bring in people who don't have any insurance at all? I don't think so. Next time I'll buy a Cadillac. Well, he's not doing a uh, bad job. His philosophy uh, was to allow the uh, uh, Congress uh, to uh, come up uh, with the different proposals in both the Senate and the House. I don't fault him uh, on that. Others say, oh, no, he should have uh, put it together. Why? They, uh, he doesn't have any greater expertise that I'm aware of uh, than uh, does uh, uh, the chairman of the various committees, than the chairman of the, those committees, like Max Borkus and others. Um, so I'm not uh, faulting uh, him. I, I disagree uh, with some of the things uh, he has done. For example, uh, uh, the prior president, George uh, W. Bush, uh, in a deal made with the drug companies, uh, prohibited uh, Medicare from getting volume discounts on drugs. And uh, my recollection is uh, that... Uh, uh, our uh, new uh, change uh, uh, president, uh, Barack Obama, uh, was against that. Now he comes into office and he makes an even worse deal with the drug companies in exchange, apparently, for the drug companies agreeing to support the comprehensive uh, health insurance legislation. Um, the president agrees that the drug companies, prescription drug companies, uh, participation in paying for all of this uh, will be limited to uh, an aggregate of $80 billion over a 10-year period or $8 billion a year. Now, it happens that if you got a 30%, which is a very modest discount, um, it would mean uh, something like $140 uh, billion a year uh, by way of uh, savings and uh, uh, over a 10-year period instead of 80 billion dollars it would mean a savings of over a trillion dollars why do you give that away why does he prevent uh, by law continuing the George Bush law uh, Americans from going uh, to Canada even on the websites or walking across the border and buying drugs American drugs made by American companies, offered at 50% discounts. We're not allowed to have the benefit of that. Why? So there are things that I don't understand and that uh, I am disappointed in, in uh, Barack Obama on those issues. The famous restaurant, which regrettably closed uh, early on, after I moved in was Louis in Sheridan Square, where for a dollar seventy-five you could have the best veal parmesan ever made in this country, and for a dime a glass of uh, beer. Uh, the Limelight was another restaurant that uh, had a prefix menu, dollar uh, seventy-five, three courses. Um, I uh, entered the village uh, about the time that the Village Voice uh, became uh, the leading uh, non-regular newspaper in the country. I don't know how, to, how they refer to it. Uh, Dan Wolf, the uh, uh, editor, and Ed Fancher, the publisher, were friends of mine. and uh, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, they endorsed me for every... Uh, position I ran for when I was when I ran for uh, assembly, Congress, uh, district leader, mayor, uh, city council, I was their candidate, and I I never ever stopped thanking them. Or some who have uh, said that. What was interesting was that. My greatest strength was not with uh, the Jews because they didn't think I was liberal enough. You know, you, everybody 
If you're Italian, your base is Italian. If you're Jewish, your base is uh, uh, Jewish. If you're black, your base is uh, black. And then you build on that uh, base for uh, getting others. But uh, my base was never Jewish. <laughs> my base was Italian and Irish. It was so peculiar. The Jews, uh, when they uh, took polls, 73% of them were for me. Uh, this would be for uh, mayor. 81% of the uh, uh, Catholics, Italian and Irish, were for me. Because I have always uh, uh, perceived myself uh, as a liberal with sanity. I've never been uh, crazy. And in fact, uh, uh, many uh, liberals uh, would say, you're not liberal enough. I say, listen, I uh, believe that what I uh, am for makes common sense. And often what you're for does not. You can call it liberal enough or not liberal enough. I know what it is uh, that I want to see this country be. And apparently, a majority of the people who vote think of it the same way as I do. So I ain't changing. Well, I cannot tell you the first thoughts, but I can tell you uh, this. Uh, I was very appreciative in every election that I've uh, run in that people gave me a chance. I mean, when I ran uh, for uh, mayor, there were outstanding people running. Uh, uh, you had Mario Cuomo, Bella Apsu, Kermit Badillo, um, A. Beam, uh, Percy Sutton. That's, those are five people who were uh, highly regarded in uh, politics in those uh, days. And would, today, uh, some of them would be perceived to be giants <laughs> compared with those that are out there. Um, and I thought to myself, the people gave me the chance. Most people never believed I would win. I'm not in any way obligated to the forces that normally elect a mayor, such as... Uh, the banks, uh, the real estate developers, uh, the uh, unions, municipal unions. And so I'm going to do everything on the merits. I'm one of the few people ever elected who came in without obligations. And uh, that's what I thought at the time. And I tried to carry out that philosophy. Well, I believe uh, that one of the great challenges was taking on the municipal unions, who had enormous um, power and who exercised that power. And it was in 1980 when uh, the transit union engaged in an illegal strike. Uh, the public employees are not allowed to strike in New York uh, City and state. Uh, there's something called the Taylor Law, which has punitive measures if they engage in an illegal strike. And oftentimes, uh, the uh, mayor or the governor uh, of a particular city, uh, the mayor, uh, is reluctant to alienate the municipal union, so they often um, don't seek to take those penalties after the strike is over. And not me. I said, you will pay. We'll take every penalty possible and impose it on you that the law permits. And in effect, I broke the strike, and I'm proud of it. I happen to be supportive of unions and believe that uh, people should be unionized, and it's a shock and wrong uh, that about 13% of American labor is unionized once was a high of about 35%. But I don't believe that people who are barred from union strikes, so to speak, or striking, um, should be in any way coddled. They have violated the law. There are penalties. I don't think the penalties are enough. I have even greater penalties. 
And as a result of my attitude and exercising the powers that I did have, um, I caused uh, uh, the union uh, to uh, regret striking. And uh, they didn't strike for, I don't know, maybe 20 years or so. Then they engaged in another illegal strike, but that's somebody else's problem, not mine. Actually, there was no opposition that I can uh, recall. Um, I decided that the city would have to go into the housing business simply because uh, housing normally built by the federal government and to some extent by the state government uh, was not being built. The federal government was out of the housing business. State government, very little in the housing business. And so I decided uh, that we would have to do something that cities rarely, if ever, did. And what we did was uh, to uh, uh, use capital funds, actually uh, a program that uh, spent $5 billion, $100 million over a 10-year period to build uh, low, moderate uh, uh, housing uh, at affordable rents. And uh, we did it. And in fact, uh, uh, the housing numbers are extraordinary. We, we uh, built uh, 250,000 housing units, my administration. 100,000 were new units. New in the sense of either actually really new or uh, rehabilitating an abandoned apartment house, of which there were many uh, in the city at uh, that time. And building, in effect, a new apartment. A new apartment, uh, my recollection, two-bedroom apartment, cost $100,000 to build, to build. And you could not uh, expect uh, low, moderate-income people to pay sufficient rent to carry all the charges. So they all had to be subsidized. But people have to have a place to live. And I'm very proud of uh, that uh, program. We really did a wonderful job. These are the ones that generally are assigned and assessed as being uh, the best of our administration. One, as Senator Patrick Moynihan said, I gave the people of the city back their morale, which had been taken away from them because they were also ashamed of what uh, Lindsay and Beam and others had done to bring us to our knees financially. I balanced the budget. I created this extraordinary housing program. I also uh, removed from politics the selection of criminal court and family court judges, they normally being selected by the mayor of the city of New York. And uh, in the past, uh, if a mayor wanted to be perceived as progressive, he would, after uh, selecting his candidate for criminal court or family court, then turn them over to a friendly uh, committee uh, for an opinion as to whether or not they were qualified, and they thought that that was merit. That's not merit. Merit selection system is what I did. I had a committee, uh, which was uh, everyone said was exceptional, half, more than half were selected uh, by the uh, two presiding justices of the um, uh, two appellate divisions in the city of New York, uh, and I appointed the other less than half, including uh, the deans of Fordham or NYU, Columbia. To find candidates and submit three candidates to me for every vacant position with me being pledged not to pick anyone who wasn't part of the three. If I didn't consider the three adequate, I could tell them to come in with three more. But they picked the candidates, not me. I picked one of the three for final selection. So I'm very proud of all of those things. Then I uh, also am very proud, equally proud, of having as the fourth 
uh, order, executive order of my administration, uh, ordered uh, that uh, there be no discrimination based on sexual orientation by the city government in housing and jobs and education. That had never been done before. And then uh, in 1986, I got the city council, which was required, to impose similar restrictions on the private sector, the businesses in the city of New York. The executive order only applied to the government. The 86 law, which I initiated, applied to the whole uh, city uh, economy. Uh, I also initiated the first anti-smoking uh, law in restaurants in big cities. And I uh, created the financial uh, campaign board, which provides to this day uh, limitations on how much you can spend in an election and subsidies uh, for those who are uh, running uh, based on the amounts that they raise privately in the private sector, uh, the city uh, gives them additional uh, money so as to remove uh, the power of money, so to speak, in preventing people uh, from running. And if, uh, if you had to justify it, all you had to say to them is men and women do not live by bread alone. And uh, so what I did that is uh, remembered is to take a congressional uh, item of legislation which provided that a certain percentage of the uh, capital assigned to build a uh, building uh, with city funds a certain percentage uh, should be used uh, for artwork um, and uh, percent for art bill is what it was called. It's still in effect. And it was a wonderful uh, item of legislation because it in effect mandated in both civic buildings and uh, other buildings that there be artwork paid for by the city uh, government. Uh, the uh, city council uh, had the bill in 1986. Um, there was uh, doubt that it could pass because there were people who had said they would not vote for it. And what I did was I called uh, people in, Democrats and Republicans, and I said, if your opponent in the primary or the general, irrespective of whether you're a Democrat or Republican, uses your vote for the bill against you, I will support you in your primary and in your general election. And uh, I have no doubt as a result of that assurance on my part, when people were somewhat afraid, in those days it was even more difficult uh, than today, um, we ultimately got a majority. I think the majority was a majority of four. And uh, the uh, then um, speaker of the city council, uh, uh, Peter Vallone, who voted against the bill. Uh, he had made a commitment to me when he was running for speaker uh, that uh, even though uh, he might not vote for the bill, I didn't ask him to vote for it, he would let it be brought to the floor. And that was in exchange for my support of his uh, uh, candidacy at the time for, uh, in effect, uh, uh, majority leader, speaker, whatever they called him in those days. And it was passed. This is a question of education. You can't necessarily vilify the opponents of the legislation who may be doing it uh, as a matter of their religious conscience. You have to educate them, bring them in, talk to them, and also use the power of the ballot uh, to uh, substitute someone who's more favorable uh, to your point of view if they decline uh, to uh, go your way. But uh, they're not evil. 
simply because they voted uh, no. Remember, uh, the high point for uh, those who believe in uh, gay marriage, uh, the right of gay marriage uh, for same-sex couples, um, was seven states. And then two states uh, got off that boat uh, in California by way of a referendum where the people voted uh, to rescind uh, their support for that legislation. And Maine, where I, a court um, rescinded uh, the uh, theretofore uh, ability uh, to have same-sex uh, marriages. So it's a matter of education, it's a matter of politics in terms of uh, supporting people who have your point of view and opposing people uh, who don't. Uh, things have changed. When I uh, was in the Congress, uh, I would have dinner every night because uh, uh, I didn't have a family and uh, there were other members of Congress who didn't have their families there. And we went out and had dinner. Today, I'm told, uh, it's a rarity to have people who are of uh, different parties, that is to say, Democrats uh, having dinner with Republicans and vice versa. And that's bad. That's very, very bad. I mean, the idea that uh, politics have taken such hold that it bars friendships. It's worse uh, today than it was then, and the reason is very simple. We were then the only city asking for special help that I can recall from the Congress, uh, from the state legislature, whereas today almost every city in America has the financial problems that we do on a lesser scale, or some maybe on a higher scale. So. I believe that the current uh, mayor, uh, Mike Bloomberg, who is doing a magnificent job, has problems that were greater than mine. I am very uh, proud of the fact uh, that uh, I have been uh, on occasion uh, referred to uh, as the quintessential New Yorker. Why, I don't really uh, know, except uh, I do have a sense of humor and self-deprecating, and uh, uh, that may uh, undoubtedly uh, contribute uh, to it. I'm proud of being a New Yorker. I'm one of the few, or I should say less than 50% of the people who live here, uh, who was born here. More than 50% came here. And I always uh, make the point, uh, you don't have to be born here to be uh, a New Yorker. If uh, you've lived here for six months and you walk faster and you talk faster and you think faster, you're a New Yorker. Um, but it is special, and I, I believe it is special because we have the sons and daughters uh, of every state in the Union. They come here to make it. Of every independent country in the world, they come here to make it. And it is that energy, energy, uh, that distinguishes us from other places. Guided uh, by uh, mythical or real heroes uh, or people that I uh, sought to emulate. We all, who are mayors of uh, New York City, refer constantly to LaGuardia, but he's probably a myth. Um, but we all say we want to come close to LaGuardia because he, it's a terrific myth. <laughs> well, uh, I used to go more often was when I was at City Hall. It was only about four or five blocks away. So now it would be less than that. I, I go probably six times a year, uh, maybe more. And I love Peking duck. And uh, what's interesting is that after I had my quadruple uh, bypass, got out of the hospital, I lost a lot of weight in the hospital, it was about 26 pounds. And the doctor said, um, you can eat anything you want, no diet restrictions, until you've gained back 10 pounds. When you gain back 10, then I'll put you on some restrictions. 
Well, I still haven't gained back the 10. I'm close to it. And so I can eat anything I want, and I do. And Peking duck and ice cream are two of the items I love the best. There are a couple of nights when I uh, uh, am sleepless, uh, but I think that's more uh, medical than, uh, than anything else. Certainly not, <laughs> not because I'm worried. Um, but I do get up at night. I keep a pad on my uh, night table, and uh, my mind, like the minds of most people, you function 24 hours a day, and your mind is working out solutions to problems that confront you in the course of the day, and suddenly uh, you uh, are aware of the fact that a phrase you've been thinking of to add to one of your letters, I love writing letters, is perfect, and you just thought of it. And you know that you won't remember it when you wake up. So you fight yourself awake. That's at least what I do because the body doesn't want to get up. It wants to sleep. And it beguiles you and says, you'll remember it in the morning. And my response uh, always is, no, I won't. And I fight until I open my eyes. <laughs> and then I write the phrase down and then I go to sleep. Well, I would say every mayor before me, and myself included, was told by all the experts that a hospital uh, located in ha Harlem, which did not provide uh, very good uh, medical care, should be closed. Uh, that it was not possible to remedy it uh, uh, for a number of reasons, one of which was that the uh, doctors there did not want to rotate through a teaching hospital because they wanted to keep uh, their jurisdictions. That hospital called Sydenham had uh, been uh, open during a period uh, when black doctors uh, were uh, not welcome at many uh, white dominated hospitals and so they opened their own hospital but not providing very good care for the whole host of reasons. And every mayor before me had backed off because of uh, threats of rioting and uh, citizen anger. I said, no, I'm going to do what's right for the people of Harlem and every other uh, district in this uh, city and provide good medical care where I can. We're going to close it, put in clinics, and we closed it. I think we saved $9 million uh, it was the highest cost hospital with the worst outcomes, according to the budget director at the time. And the people were very angry. And on reflection, even though I was praised for being courageous about it and doing the right thing, it was the wrong thing. We saved $9 million. So what? In those days, even $9 million was a relatively small sum in terms of uh, government uh, expenditures. I didn't recognize the psychological impact of closing Sydenham, the pain. And so I've uh, told people when they've asked me a question similar to yours that I regret having closed it. But it's done. Yes and no. Um, Yes, in the sense that I now believe three terms is adequate and should be the max. I think after that, your energy is drained. No, uh, in that I would have done a very good job even with that caveat. Uh, and as I, I said after I lost and David Dinkins uh, won and, and then people came to regret having thrown me out, um, I said, part chocularly, part seriously, when people said, oh, Mayor, you must run again. I said, no. The people threw me out, and now the people must be punished. So those are my feelings. <laughs>